Whatever you feel in your muscles, tightness, for example, it's because your brain is telling your muscle to feel that way. So when we look at things from a brain-based point of view, that is the most effective way to build mobility, strength, flexibility, coordination, the list goes on. There are a lot of really cool, really easy, and sometimes really weird things that we can do to stimulate different areas of the brain that can help us move better, feel better, and I'm sharing some of these with you in some bite-sized little bits of information. And when we're talking about the brain, and we always are in these videos, everything comes down to increasing the sense of safety that your brain has about your environment. These brain drills, they help reduce the threat that your nervous system might be picking up on, and that helps you move better and feel better no matter what level of fitness that you're at. If you're into this, then hit subscribe, share this with your friends. Let's make everybody a brain geek. So your brain, your whole nervous system, is constantly adapting to your environment. That means that if you're sitting right now, then as you watch this video, you're getting better at sitting. Every single movement, breath, thought, is a brain drill because everything that you do changes the brain. For example, when you walk, your brain is creating those movements that allow you to walk, but it's also receiving information about your movements and making decisions about if they're safe, what they mean, if they need to be altered or not before you then make your next step. So again, every single movement, every breath, every blink of your eyes, every thought, is a brain drill because it's changing your nervous system. In a basic sense, there's two ways that this can happen, mindlessly or mindfully. So we can be unaware of the movements that we're making, blah, 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 or we can pay attention. Usually, whenever we're training, whether that's on a yoga mat or at the gym, we're paying attention. And this alone brings more information to the brain about the movement. It makes the brain feel safer about the movement. That new movement becomes more salient. Even visualizing a movement without moving a muscle stimulates the cerebellum, and that's a part of your brain that sits back here. It's mega important for movement, accuracy, balance, coordination, and that gets stimulated in the same way as if you actually made the movements. So our bodies and minds, there aren't these like separate things that are connected. They are one and the same. So let's consider this. You may have heard of progressive overload. This is basically just different ways that we can stress a muscle group to make it grow stronger, right? So if you're doing squats, maybe you're holding it for longer, or you increase the number of reps that you do, or you add weight. Okay, to make the squats harder. But remember, your muscles don't do jack shit if the brain doesn't tell them to. And so another way that we can kind of help out this hormetic stress, this good stress, into a muscle group, for example, to get better at being strong and doing the movement is through neurological load, so to speak. So what this could look like would be adding some kind of complex movement, say to the wrist and fingers, while we're holding a position that we want to do better. So this shows up in my latest flow on Move With Adele. We're working on sissy squats, and so we're working on building strength in the leg, all around the knee, the glutes, the abdominals, to hold integrity in our low back and our hips and our knees in this kind of position. We're working on sissy squats. So you could, just like if you wanted to be stronger in this position, you could hold it for longer, you could do it more, you could decrease the rest time, you could add weight, right? These are all things that we would see and do in the fitness world, but in order to get the brain more involved, you can also add some kind of complex movement. So, for example, that could be making a figure eight shape with the hand. Okay, and you could do this with me if you like. Or maybe ooh, keeping the palm down. So as you make this figure eight. And it, it's gotta be something like, I can't talk now, because I'm doing this. It's something that takes a huge amount of energy. 
from your, for your brain to do. It's, you're trying to coordinate this movement that is unusual for you as you hold this shape. And this is another way that we can build into this progressive overload using the cerebellum, because the cerebellum is what's really activated when we do complex coordinated movements like that. And this, is, this looks a lot like what is in the newest flow on Move with Adele, where we're working on our sissy squats. And give it a try, let me know, leave a comment, and tell me how this is for you and if you have any questions. And as I said, if you wanna put it into action with some movement guided by me, this shows up in the newest flow on Move With Adele, lots of other flows on Move With Adele. Get started with your free trial. There's a link in the description to get that free trial. And you can also get my free workshop on how your brain loves to move in new ways. So if you're like, oh, I've never done that before though, that's exactly why it's so good. So check out that free workshop on why bringing novelty into your practice is so beneficial and all the other resources that I've listed in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon.